Hey, welcome back everybody. This video, we're gonna be talking about putting for loops inside of for loops. So nested for loops. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free, link in the description. So essentially what's gonna happen is the inner for loop is going to execute all the way through every iteration of the outer for loop. So let's say the inner for loop had 10 iterations and the outer for loop had 10 iterations. We're going to get a total of 100 iterations. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. Hopefully you guys are excited. All right, so starting off with the code we have, we have this for loop that just counts down from nine, skips every number down to one. I actually wanna count down every number, so I'm just going to decrement i like so. Running this, we get 10 iterations, nine down to zero. And what I wanna do is instead of outputting this, I actually want to do another for loop. So it's gonna look something like this. And for the actual structure for the for loop, we're going to say int k equals zero. By convention, this variable is named k or j. I prefer k, it's just more natural for me, but you guys can choose whatever you want. Please fight about it in the comments. And I think actually we're going to start k at nine instead of zero, so we're also going to count down for this loop. And what we're gonna do is say k greater than or equal to zero, and then k minus minus. So I pretty much copied this outer loop, but with the variable k. Now what I wanna do is I wanna console write line, and I'm going to right line the value of k. So doing this with each iteration is going to make a lot of new lines. So what you can actually do is get rid of that right line. That's going to put everything on the same line. You can see when we do this, we get a ton of junk in here. It looks like our program threw up or something. So what we actually need to do is go down here and do a console.writeline line and just leave it empty. And that will space things out a little bit better. You could also throw a space in here, which will make things a little prettier. Running this again, there we go. We get the output we were looking for. We're counting down from nine to zero, 10 times. Now, if you wanna make a triangle shape, what you can do is you can reference the outer variable inside this for loop, the inner for loop. So instead of setting k to nine, we could actually set k to i. And since i is decreasing each iteration, it's going to make a triangle shape. So running this, you'll see what I mean. There we go, we got a nice cool triangle. Uh, I don't know why so many people are interested in doing this thing, but literally there's tons of images online of how to do this and just people get excited about it. If you don't believe me, here are some images showing similar outputs. Here's one really similar to what we did. Here's a more complicated one. Definitely would try to figure out how to do that if you want. There's all kinds of tutorials on how to do all of this stuff. So that's pretty much all I got for this video, guys. Hopefully that was helpful. Be sure to check on the next video because we're going to be talking about how to do the same thing, but with while loops. Give us a little bit more practice with loops and it should be pretty exciting. So I'll see you then, guys. Thank you and subscribe.